Jeremiah chapter 29. Now these are the words of the letter that Jeremiah the prophet sent from Jerusalem unto the residue of the elders which were carried away captive. Alright, so Jeremiah writes a letter. He writes a letter to the Jews in Babylon from Jerusalem. And the complete captivity of Judah came 11 years later. The chapter reference would be 2 Kings 24, 10 through 16 here. The complete captivity would be 2 Kings 25, 1 through 7. And to the priests and to the prophets and to all the people whom Nebuchadnezzar had carried away captive from Jerusalem to Babylon. We read the other night the, the numbers of the first and second captivity. After that, Jehoiakim, uh, Je Jeconiah the king and the queen and the units and the princes of Judah and Jerusalem and the carpenters dismissed were departed from Jerusalem. Now, Nebuchadnezzar takes the rulership and he takes the career people. He takes away the people who can't build. He takes away the people who can't do anything once the army's gone. They're not going to fortify themselves. They're not going to repair the city if they ain't got the carpenters and the smiths. The carpenters would be those that worked with wood and the smiths would be those that worked with metal. This is like, um, I'm trying to think, there was, there was a time in Israel's history that the Philistines kept them under control, I believe it was Gideon. No, take that back, it was Saul and his son Jonathan. No one had a weapon in their hand but only Jonathan and Saul his father. But except for, you know, a file. To file their matrix and their uh, farming tool. By the hand of Elijah, Elijah, he knows his name, the son of Shaphan, and Jemariah, the son of Hilkiah, whom Zech Zechariah, king of Judah, sent from to Babylon to Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, saying, So this is the one who held the letter of Jeremiah and written. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, this is the letter, the God of Israel, unto all that are carried away captives. Alright, so you that are in Babylon, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon. So God caused the captivity to happen because of sin. God caused it, but they did it themselves. Build ye houses in Babylon and dwell in them in Babylon and plant gardens and eat the fruit thereof now Cana was a pre-built uh, city they were done there was nothing that they had to do when they came to the land of Cana it was already prepared now they're in Babylon they're going to have to restart all over again that's kind of hard. But we are Christians in Babylon today. We are told to do right, verse 7, and produce other Christians, verse 6. I mean, we're to, we're to build houses, we're to plant gardens, we're to eat the fruit thereof. But like Daniel, we're not to be Babylonians. We're to be God's people. Take wives, take ye wives, so get married. And beget sons and daughters. Well, that defies sodomite marriages because you can't beget a son or daughter if you get two men or two women together. In Babylon. That'll be the next thing. If you have a Christian to think they're sodomites and God loves them. And take wives for your son. Oh, see, sons and wives. And give your daughters to husbands. Oh, look at that. God defines marriage in the Bible. That they may bear sons and daughters. Produce other Jewish people. Make yourself a home. Plant your gardens. Be fruitful or multiply. That they be increased and not diminished. This is exactly what they did in, in uh, Exodus, in Egypt. They kept growing and growing and growing and got Pharaoh upset. 
And you think, you know, well, where's the, uh, the hard labor? Where is the, the rigor? Well, Daniel's thrown into the lion's den. Shadrach, Meshach, and Indigo is thrown into uh, the fiery furnace. Seek the peace of the city, whether I've caused you to care, what, what, uh, whether I've caused you to be carried away captive. I mean, you've got to be peaceful. You've got to do right. You've got to be law-abiding citizens. I sent you there because of your sin. You can't go home yet because you're in your sin. And pray unto the Lord for it. For Babylon. We got a wicked ruler here in Babylon, the king of Babylon. You're supposed to pray for it. And Paul writes to Timothy, and Peter tells us, under Nero, for in the peace thereof shall ye have peace. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, let not your prophets and your diviners that be in the midst of you deceive you oh the false prophets went to your diviners your open up the, the newspaper find the, the horoscope read the tea leaves the bumps on your head they're in Babylon too You say, well, why wouldn't God get rid of them? Because there are people there in Babylon who want them. Deceive you. They deceive. You're in Babylon because of their deceit. You are in Babylon because of your sin. And think, just be, hey, if I move somewhere else in the world, somewhere, be sure to know your sin will find you out. Moving ain't going to change who you are. God moved them because they polluted the land. Some of their sins remain with them. Neither hearken to your dreams, which you have, which ye have caused to be dreamed. Forget all that stuff. That's what got you in trouble the first time. Give it up. The lesson here is don't think you're going back. To the land because you're not few will do it Ezra when the elders saw the, 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 the foundations built they cried because the glory of the first temple was gone very few are going to make it that are still here for they prophesy falsely unto you in my name. They haven't changed. I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Haven't you learned your lesson? For thus saith the Lord that after 70 years, Daniel 9, 1 through 3, after 70 years be accomplished at Babylon, I will visit you. That's when God will show up and start helping them. 70 years. And perform my good word towards you. What's the good word? He's going to leave arraignment. He's going to bring them back in the land. He's going to forgive them. In causing you to return to this place. My jury of people are not going to make it back. But some will. And the new generation will be. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. The thoughts of peace, not of evil. The result of sin to give you an expected end God did not want them in Babylon God did not want to bring the axe upon him he did not want to bring out the battle axe he did not want to bring out the rod no parent wants to do that but you've done it yourself then shall ye call upon me Daniel and you shall go and pray unto me, Daniel, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, and I will hearken unto you. And you shall seek me and find me when ye shall stretch, when you shall search for me with all your heart. Ezra, 
took the word of the law of the Lord and studied it and studied it hard before the Lord called him to go do what he had to do and ye shall seek me and find me when ye shall search for me with all your heart God told Jeremiah a couple of times don't even pray for him I'm not going to listen and when they pray to me I ain't going to hear it. things have changed or will be changed I will be found of you saith Lord and I will turn away your captivity and I will gather you from all the nations and from all the places where I have driven you saith Lord and I will bring you again into the place whence I caused you to be carried away captive because he has said the Lord has raised us up prophets in Babylon know that this know that thus saith the Lord the Lord thus ah, wait a minute, hold on. know this that know that thus saith the Lord the king that sits upon the throne of David and all the people that dwell in this city and of your brethren that are not gone forth with you into captivity there's still people behind there are still kings puppet kingdom but there are still kings Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Behold, I will send upon them the sword, the army, the famine, the pestilence, and will make them like vile. God intended figs to be ripe and good. He says vile figs. Remember that study we did the other night with the naughty evil figs? They can't be eaten. That matches what we read the other night. So you got to destroy them. you got to get rid of them. They are so evil. The government that is in place now, even though I had Nebuchadnezzar come into the land and take people captive, we looked at, we looked at two of three the other night, the numbers. It did not cause Israel, uh, Judah, which is Israel, they did not cause Judah or the people of Jerusalem to get right. Matter of fact, they gotten worse. The sword, the famine is still, the pestilence is still going to happen more. You would figure that they have gotten right. But God has already told Jeremiah, 28 chapters into 29 now, they're not going to change. They're not going to repent. For many will go the broad way. And you got to realize when you deal with people, and maybe family, friends, co workers, whoever, you got to realize that some people are not going to repent. They are not going to get right no matter what God does in their life. God is not willing to any perish, but they don't care. They are so vile. They are so evil. They are so wicked. They are so naughty. And they won't change. Can you make a naughty, evil, wicked fig ever become a good fig? You can't. Only by the new birth can you be a new creature. But you got to be born again. And we've been warned to say that for God so loved the world and gave his only begotten son. But Christ died for all, but not all will receive. many will reject and I will persecute them with the sword war and with sword with the famine and with the pestilence and will deliver them to be removed to all the kingdoms of the earth to getting out of the land and to be a curse and an astonishment and a hissing and a reproach among all the nations whether I have driven them God is angry. God is fed up. And God is going to remove them out of his sight, out of the picture, out of the land. You know what God's going to do to those that, that reject his son? He's going to get them out of the land. He's going to get them out of their sight. He's going to cast them off into eternal damnation. 
and they're not ever going to come back. But to the Jew, when you take them out of the land, that is their heaven. They won't go into new earth. New Jerusalem belongs to the Christians, and the new earth belongs to the Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob seed. If a Jew did not get right Old or New Testament, he went to hell just as anybody else went to hell. Because they have not hearkened unto my word. And that's what that is the sin. What is sodomy? What is adultery? What is lying? What is stealing? It is something that God said not to do. And when you do it, you have disobeyed God. Adam, don't eat the fruit. He ate the fruit. How more disobedient can you get? Then when God says something, and you do quite opposite. Which I sent unto them by my servants, the prophets. So there are false prophets, and there are prophets of God. Both speak in the name of the Lord. And you gotta know your Bible to know the difference. And they couldn't go running to the priest. Mr. Levite? Yes. How do I know? They were part of the false prophets themselves. So you think he's gonna tell you, oh, that guy's phony, like Jeremiah pointed out one guy, two guys in the Bible, and named them and point the finger in their face and said, You're a false prophet? You think they were gonna do that against their friends? You better know what the law said when you're in Jeremiah's time. You better find out what a false prophet and the characteristics and what God says about it. You better be in fellowship with God for God to speak to you and say, yeah, that's the wrong guy. You better, as a new as a newborn babe in Christ, you better be as a, as a uh, born-again Christian, un saved under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. You better study your Bible to realize who those wolves in sheep clothing are. You are without any excuse to say, well, I didn't know that he was a false prophet. I didn't know he was a wolf in sheep clothing. Yeah, the Bible told you all about him. He told you the characteristics with him. You just want a, a, a page in the Bible. Open up to page 37. Oh, all the characteristics of a false prophet. Okay. No, no, no. You got to study your Bible. You got to study chapter and verse. You got to study verses with verses. You got to search the scriptures. One place says that their prophecies doesn't happen. Another place said they'll say they'll tell their men not to marry anybody. They'll tell you in another place that you know they, they deceive. They'll tell you in another place, and then another place you got to study. And Jeremiah is already quoted to them. If that prophet says he, something's going to happen and it did not happen, that's what that Jonah got all upset. He sat underneath the tree waiting for the city. I went in there and told him that the city's going to be destroyed. It didn't happen. You know, in the eyes of the Jew, Jonah was a false prophet. But how can you say Jonah wasn't a false prophet? Because years later, Nineveh did fall. It just took a long while. There are some prophecies in Isaiah, Jeremiah, and the book of Moses that are prophecy of Jesus Christ, and they haven't happened yet. And they're not false prophets. It's going to happen. You got to study. Rising early and sending them, but ye would not hear, saith the Lord. They're not even listening to chapter 29. You know? And that's human nature. And it's sorry that we are so, re uh, we are so rebellious. When God tells you what our conduct, our conduct should be, and we do totally opposite, and then wonder why we got a miserable life. The miserable life is because we do not what God told us to do. We do not act on how God tells us to act. Hear ye therefore the word of the Lord. Isn't it? God just told them, they're not going to hear my word. Hear ye the word of the Lord. 
and you know they're not. The only one who's hearing to the word is Jeremiah. We'll learn about Beirut and we'll learn about the Ethiopian eunuch. They had little alternative motives. They had fear, but it wasn't really the fear of God like Jeremiah had. We'll study about them later. Therefore, the word of the Lord. You didn't say hear. I know, because they're not going to. But hear ye the word of the Lord. All ye of the captivity. Alright. It's not going to happen in Jerusalem. But while you're in Babylon, listen. Those people that are here right now in Jerusalem, they're not going to listen. But you that are in Babylon, whom I have sent from Jerusalem to Babylon, don't you guys realize that you are where you are today because of your sins? Daniel realizes it. Ezra realizes it. Nehemiah realizes it. Mordecai Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, of Ahab, the son of Koliah, and of Zedekiah. Now these are not the kings. The son of Messiah, which prophet will prophesy a lie unto you in my name. These are false prophets that God named. This, what you're reading from chapter 4 to what we're reading right now is written on paper or a scroll is written on a skin or something in ink and is sent to Babylon and when they pick it up they say that Ahab and Zedekiah the son of these two men are false prophets this is like Paul saying Christian church yeah I hear you got a man committing a fornication in your church you just imagine those people who You've got two men right there in Babylon. Here are their names. You probably don't give them this address. They are false prophets by the word of God. You know what the church needs to do? It needs to call out names. This guy that's on the radio, you do not need to listen to this guy. He does not speak the Bible. He does not speak for God. This guy that's on the television set, you need to turn him off and name names. And tell the lawyers you, they can go take a flying leap with big legs around their necks into the, into the ocean. Stand up before a judge and say, Your Honor, they're supposed to be Christians, right? Yeah. Well, can I read a can I read a section on the book of First uh, Corinthians on how they're not supposed to take us to court? You think any judge in America would listen to the Bible and listen to what God? But God says, name them. Which prophesy? What's the crime? A lie unto you in my name. There are people out there, people in America, the people of all the world. Listen to me. There are people that say, thus saith the Lord, and blessed Jesus Christ, and God the Father, and everything, title, and name of Jesus Christ, and God, and they may prophesy falsely. You need to check them out with the Bible. Behold, I will deliver them into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, and he shall slay them before your eyes. So what do you think would happen to Ahab and Zedekiah? Now let me ask you a question. Do you think that this prophecy written in Jerusalem on paper, delivered by the, by, I was going to say the U.S. mail system, by the Jerusalem mail system, the Pony or Camel Express, wherever they had back then, do you think when they read this letter and you think that God said it's going to happen, you know it happened, do you think they got right? Does Daniel mention any of these people? Daniel was in Babylon. He was at the king's house.
And you're going to see Nebuchadnezzar kill him. I've got to have a Gentile kill the false prophets that the law said you were to stone. Jerusalem. Why do I got to send a Gentile to do your job? Oh, but you wanted Jesus dead. And guess what? You used a Gentile, the Roman government, to do it. Didn't they claim Jesus is a false prophet? They didn't believe his, his uh, words that he was God. One time they were going to stone him. And of them shall be taken up a curse by all the captivity of Judah which are in Babylon, saying, The Lord make thee like Zedekiah and like Ahab, whom the king of Babylon roasted. There's your fiery furnace. Shadrach, there's your being in the fire, Meshach. There's the flame in the go. But boy, the fourth man was not there with this guys. These guys, Ahab and Zedekiah, are going to be a proverb. They're going to be a curse. You know, if you do that against the Lord, you're going to be an Ahab. How dare you lie about God, Mr. Zedekiah? So they die by fire because they have committed villainy in Israel and have committed adultery with their neighbor's wives. Oh, preachers having sex with women that weren't their wives or preachers having sex with women who were married to husbands. B.C. 599, nothing's changed. So not only were they prophesying and lying in God's name, but they're committing adultery and have spoken lying words in my name, which I have not commanded them. Even I know and am a witness, saith the Lord. Can you imagine these guys standing at the great white throne judgment and God says, call for witness. What's your witness? God. Whoa. Whoa. Lord Jesus, will you take an oath of God? God, yes, son. You swear to tell the whole truth, nothing but the truth, so help me. What did you see these guys do? I saw them speaking in my name, and, and I never said it. Now, who's going to say not guilty? Who's going to call God a liar with these? These two guys that God says, I'm going to stand up and I'm going to testify again. Oh, you are in trouble. Can you imagine, here you are in a courtroom, right? Let's, let's pick a stupid little charge of being in a courtroom, speeding. All right? Here you're in a courtroom. Oh, I, got the best I got the best defense. I'm going to get out of it. You know, the judge calls you up there, and you get up to see. He said, in the courtroom, says, state, explain the thing. State, you got any witnesses? Yeah, I got a witness. All right, bring them in. And this voice just comes on through, and everybody just falls to their knees. And purity enters the courtroom as God steps up to the witness stand and says, I saw him doing 70 miles per hour in a 35 mile per hour. Do you think you're going to get out of that? And God says, as far as Ahab and Zedekiah, I am going to testify against them. I am a witness. Now, you want to talk about a Jehovah witness? There's a Jehovah witness. There's Jehovah being a witness against a crime. It ain't going to be a kingdom hall. It's going to be a judgment hall. You imagine all those Jehovah Witnesses who use God's name is wrong? Can you imagine God calling them up the great white throne judgment if they're lost? All right? Quick, which, which tribe of you were? What, what do you mean tribe? 144 is what? What number were you? Come on, quick, what number were you? Well, let me ask you something. If you were 5,337, how did you become 140? All right, you became 20,221. 
Can you get 220 million from 155, 150, 144,000? Don't you realize when you get when you had 144,001 that Jesus was supposed to come back in 19 something and 19 something and 19 something and we were supposed to build a house for for the prophets and all that. Oh well, they didn't come, so I'll use it for myself. Behold the eyes of the Lord in every place, behold the evil and the good. And when you use God's name wrong as a lie, Jeremiah 20. Nine. God says, false prophet, I am a witness. Alright? Jehovah Witness steps up the witness stand, the great white throne judgment. Uh, you're a Jehovah Witness. Oh, wow. Alright, any witnesses? Yes. And all the angels fall down and say, Lord Jehovah's gotten up there. Lord Jehovah, all oh, holy is your name. What are you? I'm a Jehovah Witness. <laughs> what did you witness? I didn't say nothing to those people. They were not any of my witnesses. I don't even know them by name. I don't even know who they are. They ain't got the blood of my son. They, they, you want me to say anything else? You want me to go about the guy in upstate New York with the big glasses and read golden plates? Let me talk about him and stole everybody. What did he do? What did he do? He stole everyone's wives. You know how you know how Joe was killed? He was cold he was killed in a mob in his jail cell for what? For stealing their wives. Adultery. You can't be a moron and read Jeremiah twenty nine and remain in that religion. With with an angel baloney. Probably his real name was Oscar Meyer. That was the name of the angel, Oscar Minor Baloney. He committed adultery with other men's wives, and he lied in God's name. Well, how do you know that? Let's see the plates. Bring them out. Oh, they're locked up. Yeah. Hmm. Thus shalt thou also speak to Shemaniah the Nehalemanite. Saying, this is a false prophet. And he made himself a priest. Oh. So not only was this guy a priest who knew a false prophet, he's a false prophet who made himself a priest. Do you know anybody who's a priest? No, let's take that back. You know anybody who's a false prophet and made themselves priests? Or not to marry? Who tell things wrong, you know, if you take this cookie and give me money and burn candles, meet me in a closet, give me a little boy for pleasure and fun, and, and you know, get five hole and, and everything else like that, and you maybe be able to get into glory, and, you know, I'll get you out of purgatory a couple of years and stuff like that, or shoot, purgatory is now closed, 20 of beads, and give me more money, and you know a false prophet made himself a priest, we, we're getting every religion in chapter 29. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, Because thou hast sent letters in thy name, his letterhead, unto all the people that are in Jerusalem. So he sends letters back to Jerusalem. Before Jeremiah's letter. And to Zephaniah the son of... I hate when they move the word onto the next line. That's, probably, that's some of my problems reading. They, they move the words in the next line, so I gotta go Zephaniah. The son of... Mas, Mas, and then these names, these people, they know who they are. Masihiah. That name is. Now look at that. I just saw that. Zephaniah. Zephaniah is the son of Masaniah, the priest. And back in 21, there's Zechariah, the son of Masaniah. That's the same name. But in 21, it doesn't say priest. All of these guys are brothers. Zephaniah, Zach, Zedekiah. Excuse me, and there was one. There was what was it? What was? Oh boy, I can't think of it. Huffin and Buffin. One of those two boys. 
Where am I? Is it, uh, the priest and all to all the priests saying, this guy sends a letter to the priest. The Lord has made thee a priest in the stead of Jehoiada the priest. So he writes to the priest saying, God has spoken to me specially, upstate New York. No, sorry. That ye should be officers in the house of the Lord. God has made me to make you officers, board of directors. Woo! Big fancy titles. I'm having so much fun, I, I totally miss my place. Officers in the house of the Lord for every man that is mad. <laughs> Everyone is mad, so here I am to straighten you all out. And maketh himself a prophet, that thou shouldst put him in prison and in the stock. The Lord has sent, the Lord has made thee priest, Zephaniah. In the stead of Jehoiada the priest, that ye should be officers in the house of the Lord, taking care of the house, for every man that is mad, gone crazy, and make himself a prophet, crazy prophet, that should that thou should put him in prison in the stocks. Who do you think he's talking about? Who do you think he has in mind when he just wrote that letter? He's writing about, he's talking about, the subject is Jeremiah. Accuse Jeremiah of being mad, crazy. The Lord has spoken to me. I'll give you a position in the church if you'll lock him up and put him in the stocks. In other words, shut Jeremiah up and let me speak. Now therefore, why hast thou not reproved Jeremiah of Antioch, which maketh himself a prophet to you? He made himself a No, no, no. You made yourself a prophet. You liar. And there are men in the pulpits talking about other men in the pulpits that are supposed to be in the pulpit, while you're not supposed to be in the pulpit. How's that one? Did I make the flame a little hotter for you? You, rebu you rebuke other preachers God called while you're not call God called. That is Shemaniah. I may not get the names right, but I've got the topic right. This chapter is just full of false prophets. And they are in Babylon. It has not changed. The guy's sending letters back to Jerusalem. He's been taken captive. Take Jeremiah and lock him up. He's a fool. Wait a minute. Hasn't what Jeremiah said, chapter 28 chapters, hasn't it happened? According to the law, Jeremiah is a right prophet. He just told you one guy is going to die before a year, and he dropped dead. What do we say, two months? If I were to say Joe's going to die, uh, let's see, this is August. He's going to die in October. I'd be a fool unless God spoke to me. And God won't speak to me about anything like that because that's not in the Bible. And you need to realize people that live godly and you're doing right, there are people speaking and writing letters behind your back trying to get you down and trying to get you in trouble. They're trying to pull you down. And no contact big people in big places and problems in big positions, big money. What happened to Shemaiah? Where is his name rest in the Bible? But we all know about Jeremiah. Is there a book of Shemaiah, the, the Nehemiah, whatever his name is? 67th book of the Bible? Is, is there a book with his name in it? I don't think so. You know, Jeremiah it backs up Isaiah. Isaiah backs Jeremiah. Jeremiah uh, backs up Daniel. Daniel surely backs up Jeremiah. And Ezekiel and Jeremiah work together. As Jeremiah and Ezekiel work together. Where's Shem, Shemaiah's book? He writes a letter saying, This guy's. Is this, have you seen Jeremiah be. 
I don't think so. So to me, Shemaiah, just why that letter he wrote, that letter is recorded in the Bible. Just as much as David's title deed to Jerusalem is recorded in the Bible in two places, you have this man's letter recorded that we just read. It's a lie. I stand that I don't know Jeremiah. I wouldn't recognize him in a group of people in heaven, but I stand to it by what I've read about Jeremiah. This guy lied about him. He's already a false prophet in my eyes. I don't see Jeremiah mad. I see him mad at sins, but he's talking about give him a band-aid for his uh, finger for all the lip dancing he's doing. Put him in a rubber room with a uh, with bubble wrap. Mm -hmm. I'm having fun. So why should the devil put him in prison and put him in the stocks? He's already been in prison. He's already been put in stocks. He's going back again, you know. Now, therefore, why hast thou not reproved Jeremiah of Ananias, which make himself a prophet to you? Well, sorry, he didn't make himself a prophet. Chapter 1 says God made him a prophet from the womb. For therefore, he sent us... He... How on earth did Jeremiah send them to Babylon through King, King Nebuchadnezzar? All right, yeah, I got your phone number. <laughs> this is modern version. Yeah, I know. We don't have roles here. We have cell phones now. Yeah, you want to come over here. I, I got this great prophecy I just thought about. That you're going to come down here. You're going to take all my people away. And you're going to bring them back to Babylon. Some of you are going to be. Some of you are not. By the way, Mr. Nebuchadnezzar, can you please bring the sword? Yeah, that's war. Can you bring some pestilence too? Can you make it not rain, please? Yeah, oh, sure. All right, and then we need a famine with. Oh, okay, no rain, don't be a famine. Sure, never gonna answer. All right, uh, what do you want for that? You want 19.99 plus shipping and handling, and you also give me a free prayer rug. All right, I'll take that. What did Jeremiah do to cause them to go to the Babel? Sword, famine, pestilence. How did Jeremiah do that? Therefore he sent us, he sent unto us in Babylon, saying, Their captivity is long, build ye houses, dwell in them, and plant gardens, and eat the fruit there. He's responding to the letter. He's telling us to stay here. We're Jews, we belong in Israel. Israel is our land. Judah is our land. Jerusalem is our land. The land of Reuben is our land. From Dan to Bathsheba is our land. Jeremiah is telling us to stay here in Babylon. Yes, he is. Because God told him. And Zephaniah the priest read this letter in the ears of Jeremiah the prophet. <laughs> this is what this guy is saying about you. Then came the word of the Lord unto Jeremiah, saying, Send to all them of the captivity, saying, Thus saith the Lord, concerned Shemaniah, I'm saying his wrong name wrong, that Nimhon might, because that Shemaniah has prophesied unto you, and I sent him not, and he caused you to trust in a lie. People were believing what he said. Jeremiah is mad. He's crazy. He's done all this. He's, he's now telling us we're here in Babylon. He's telling us, you know, stay here in Babylon. Don't go back to Jerusalem. Therefore, thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will punish Shemaniah, the Nemanite, and his seed. Uh oh. He shall not have a man to dwell among this people. You can't find any more children of Shemaniah the Nehanamite. Anymore. They're gone. Neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people. He will not be around when Ezra and Nehemiah. He's not in that list. He's going to die, and he's going to die before 70 years. Neither shall he behold the good that I will do for my people, saith the Lord, 
because he has taught rebellion against the Lord. Ooh, I feel sorry for anybody that teach rebellion against God. Imagine God getting up to judgment and witnessing against you. I don't think you're going to find... Listen, they try to seek witnesses against Jesus Christ, and they got so many people they couldn't get their story straight.